everybody. Welcome to Tim's Vinyl Confessions. I'm Tim Durling, and uh, I've got a very special guest with me, Mr. Chris Preston from My Rock and Roll Heaven. How you doing, Chris? Hello, Tim. I'm great. Fantastic. Thanks for having me back to do this show. I'm excited. Uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, we. Uh, I said at the beginning of this year, I was going to refer back to a lot of charts from 1984 because I think it really could be the greatest year in, in music as far as my active memory goes. Yeah. It's just there were so many, so many great songs, so many great albums, and so many great artists hitting peaks at this time. Absolutely. And so many different genres on the chart. There was room for everything. And yeah, it really was. I'm, yeah, it's, it's a, it was a year that, I came of age musically as well. So, you know, we're of a similar vintage. So I think uh, to your point, this is definitely one of the best years in music history, for sure. Okay, so what we're going to do, done this format before, I don't think Chris and I have done a chart show. No, this is my like, first chart so, show. But I know that uh, because we like to do props, I know that Chris is more prepared than I am. <laughs> and he's got more of these albums. Uh, what we're doing is these are the top, Selling albums, top 100 albums in Canada this week, 40 years ago. So let's get started. At number 100, this is a Canadian band, Santers, led by guitarist and singer Rick Santers. Their album, Guitar Alley, is at number 100 this week. Number 100, and little point from that one, they did a cover of Freeze all right now on that one. They did, and the album was produced by... You got me. <laughs> Rick Emmett. Oh, yes. Yes. They had a, a working relationship, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think Rick Santers ended up on the Sporty Kings tour and maybe surveillance, yeah. too. There wasn't much of a surveillance tour, but he would get those vocals. He had a really high voice. Uh, Santers, Fantastic. Santers, to me, were a lot like Coney Hatch. Yes. Yeah. Very yeah. similar. Absolutely. Good stuff. All right. All right. Number 99 from the UK kind of ska band, Madness. Keep on or keep moving. So this was, um, I believe, the follow up, right, to their debut, which had that big song everybody knew, "Our House." Yeah. Um, so yeah. this one was not as successful here. Only reached number sixty six on the RPM chart. Um, I, and I know someone's going to correct us, so I just want to say, yeah, it was their North American debut. I think they had two or three albums. Sure, yes, correct. Prior, prior to that. Uh, number 98, correct. the late Dan Fogelberg with his album Windows and Walls. That's down from 84 this week. He was a big, big uh, soft rock guy in the U.S. I, I remember this, that because my mom had a lot of his albums. <laughs> you know what? This album had that song, The Language of Love. Call it a guilty pleasure, but that's a good song. Absolutely, yeah. Classic song. What I'm saying, 1984 was just so good. Right, we've already got what? We've got some classic rock, some ska, and now some easy listening. And we're about to completely Ow. switch gears <laughs> at number 97. <laughs> so there's a lot of a lot of albums on this chart that are still, were released in 83, but are still on the chart, obviously. So number 97 is uh, our friend, Mr. Ozzy Osbourne, and his classic album, Bark at the Moon. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. First with... Uh, Jakey you Lee. hear that? That, that wasn't me. <laughs> Who was that? Who was that? So this is, a, this is a great album, and it went all the way up to number 23 and went platinum in Canada. Um, but that was Ozzy's third solo effort. Yeah. If I am correct. Third, third yes. yeah. Um, third full and yeah. That, Unless we can't that speak. That title the track and that music video. Oh, yeah. yeah. Skewed the, this scared the crap out of me. That, walking by um, that in the record store. Woo. Yeah, yeah, that was it, yeah. Me too. <laughs> Do you remember when uh, Hostess Chips had came up with stickers that had like album covers on them? That was I one did. of them. And that was that was really freaky. Uh, so yeah, the variety we're already hitting so much variety here. Number ninety six. It's new. Uh, this is one of the original Canadian punk bands, so they've been around a while at this point. Teenage Head, and the album is called Endless Party. That's new this week at ninety six. Number 96 with a bullet. A little, just a quick little note I want to mention to people too. If you're into charts and following Canadian music, the Canadian charts had an interesting designation on the Canadian artists that said M-A-P-L, um, which for those of you in the U.S. who wouldn't know, this was Canadian content. Music, artists, producer, lyrics, 
you had to have a certain minimum requirement to be deemed, deemed Canadian. So a lot of these ones that we're going through now, that was a MAPL um, designation for that one. Number 95, Bonnie Tyler, you great UK artist. Her Faster Than the Speed of Night album, which featured, of course, the smash hit Total Eclipse of the Heart. Um, I think that was probably her most successful album over here, um, but it had been on the, the chart for almost a year at that point. So that's a leftover from 1983 on its way down. Yeah, it's, just, it's such an iconic song. And, and also, I've never heard it, Chris, but also on this album, she covers Brian Adams straight from the heart. I have never heard it either. Now I'm going to yeah. have to listen to it. So there you She's go. She's got a great voice for that song, I think. The same year. The same year that Brian did it. So yeah. very interesting. Um more more variety. Uh number 94, yep. some jazz. Pat Metheny with Charlie Hayden and Billy Higgins. The album's called Rejoicing. That's holding at 95 this week. And it's really interesting to see as we go through these albums and artists that there are some that I never would have in a million years guessed that they'd even have hit the top 100 in Canada, like this one, like a, a jazz album, but this was the era of <laughs> we are touching on every genre. And uh, another Canadian artist coming in at number 93, uh, Mr. Pat Travers, um, very, very successful guitarist. He had a lot of success in the U.S., and it's his album Hot Shot, uh, and that's another MAPL designation. Yeah, yeah, you know, working in radio in Canada, we know all about CanCon and what it takes to classify as CanCon. Actually, everything in this chart that's CanCon is full CanCon. It's more... Okay. Um, Usually more in the song category where if, that you see not all of those are filled in. But uh, exactly. at number 92, uh, Taco with Let's Face the Music. I, I do believe this was his follow-up album because I think his first was. album was called After Eight. Now, I only remember that it's called After Eight, not because it had putting on, putting on the Ritz on it, but because I think of those After Eight mint chocolates that used to come in the little sleeves <laughs> that were, we'd get up you know, Christmas time, you know, real fancy. Exactly. Yeah. That's when you got at the fancy chocolate. Yeah. Uh, number 91. That. That's company. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Easy kids. Yeah. Number 91, brand new on the charts this week was uh, Roger Waters and his debut solo album, The Pros and Cons of Hitchhiking. Some of you may remember that controversial cover. There was a bear bum on the front. <laughs> yeah. People yeah, had a problem with that. Been, yeah. Some, depending on where you get it, it might be censored. It might not be. Yeah. Right. Correct. Uh, number 90, Canadian artist Jane Sibbery with her album No Borders Here. Uh, I believe this is the album that had her famous video, Mimi on the Beach, which you pretty much had to grow up in, in, in Canada watching much music to even know she is. Uh, quick comparison, I would compare her to someone like Kate Bush, maybe, or yes. Tori Amos, somebody like that. Yes. So. And that video was in heavy. Heavy, heavy rotation. Rotation. There weren't yeah. a lot of, I guess, Canadian videos at 1984, yeah. but that one got a lot of attention, yeah. Um, number 89, and it's from the wonderful and late Christine McVie, uh, her self-titled album, which the big song on that, everybody would know, right, uh, Got a Hold On Me, Great which song. was uh, a big hit for her. Yeah, and that album went up to number 39 in Canada, but um, that's a, a great, great song and a great record. Yeah. Uh, holding at number 88 this week, Berlin with the album Love Life. That one's notable to me because I really love No More Words, which was that's a right, yeah. single from that yeah. one. Yeah, that's uh, that. You still hear today occasionally on, on like 80s channels. Number yeah. 87 and holding at number 87 is this classic debut yeah, album. The very first. Madonna. This yeah. is her self-titled debut, which uh, the song Borderline is, in my opinion, her best song and the one that broke her. And that video, I remember, played all summer long um, yeah. on video hits. We didn't have much music yet. At the end of August it came, but this one was her breakthrough album. Um, eventually, I think it went platinum probably in Canada, but... Uh, that one was holding at number 87 this week in 1984. Yeah. And at number 86, I'm going to say this is a band that, that kind of broke in Canada before they broke in the States because uh, Much Music yes. played a lot of their videos you know, prior to the Joshua Tree coming out. 
um, you too and their live album under a blood red sky that is at number 86 this week number 85 again Canton. oh yeah got the debut album for mr Corey hart first defense which featured his breakthrough hit and music video that played all over friday night videos in the u.s sunglasses at night we all know that one uh this album was was massive up here um and also had his ballad it ain't enough on it so mr Corey hart hanging in at number 85 and correct me if i'm wrong chris but didn't that album have two different covers wasn't there a color cover for that maybe the u.s version seems to be there were two different covers for that uh, one. of him but uh quite possible yeah the canadian that's definitely the canadian one was not but you might be right yeah absolutely uh, so at number 84, I mean, this would have been one of many compilations, um, and he did do a lot of these, Kenny Rogers and duets. So I suppose you would have the likes of Dolly Parton and Dottie West and Kim Carnes and... Uh, Jane Easton. Jane Easton. Oh, no, Spike not quite yet. Here. Oh, no, well, yeah, no, maybe not quite. Uh, yeah, that would have been, that was have been. Like 83, you're right, we've got tonight, yeah. yeah. Which is the first time I ever heard that song. I had no idea it was a Bob Seger song. <laughs> Yeah. Neither did I. Neither did I. Uh, number 83. So this is an interesting one. Yeah. Um, our, our American friends are going to be like, what? <laughs> number 83 is Nash the Slash, American Band Ages. So yeah. That's how it is. Band dash ages. So now I'll just do a quick little Nash the Slash was a guy who at one multi-instrumentalist who at one point decided to wrap him himself in like mummy bandages and played shows like that. And he eventually uh, did some albums with Canadian band FM. There's two FMs. He hooked up with the Canadian band FM. But his, his solo stuff was, I think, a little bit more edgy, a little more new wavy, punky, and FM was a bit more pop. So that's his uh, his album, American Band Ages, at number 83. Yeah. Interesting, interesting artist. Yeah, I've had... Um, yeah, FM started off as a little bit more... Uh, Prague. They, uh, I know they toured with Rush a lot, and as a matter of fact, uh, I believe um, the guy that replaced Nash the Slash was Ben Mink, who was a multi instrumentalist and also a pretty well known songwriter. And uh, when I sat in on a Rush fans roundtable, had the privilege of talking to Ben Mink, super nice guy. So um, yeah, definitely a bit. Yeah, uh, unless you're, um, you know, if you're a diehard Rush fan, you've probably seen the name FM. Maybe not Nash the Slash. Yes. Uh, so at number 82, we already talked about her. Dolly Parton with The Great Pretender. So now, yeah, we're getting some country thrown into the mix. I can only imagine she must have covered The Platters, The Great Pretender on this album. Or maybe she Quite just liked possibly. it. <laughs> that is number 82. It is funny. I think my grandparents had that album along okay. with a couple, of, a couple other of these that are going to show up. Uh, yes. And up to number 81, Holding Steady at 81, is a fantastic album from, I'm going to try it. Oh, and there are Tim's, Tim, I have the cassette as well, but I'm yeah. going to take that out. There yeah. we go. I get the vinyl. Pretty special. Yeah. Tour de Force. Um, My favorite. This one, favorite yeah, this this one's a great album. Features the big songs where If I'd Been the One and Back Where You Belong. Um, but this uh, this one eventually, I think it went up number 53 only in Canada, but it did go gold here. Um, and that's, uh, they kind of started on, moved. they were moving at this point a little bit more kind of mainstream, right? Like not as much of the Southern rock and a little bit more kind of um, AOR, I guess you would it's call a it. Great, it's just a great 80s rock album. Yeah. Um, yeah and exactly. we talked about CanCon, there are two songs on this album um, that got... Uh, Airplane Canada because they are Canadian content. Um, and those would be Back Where You Belong, which I still hear on Canadian radio, and also One Time for Old Times. Those songs were both written by a Canadian singer songwriter named Gary O'Connor, who recorded under the name Gary O. So uh, he had a couple videos that were on much with like Shades of 45. And, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So there you go. That's a good example. I mean, that's a definitely a non Canadian band that have a couple songs that classify. Okay, so I guess that's me. Number 80, um, down from 75. I think these guys were Australian, Real Life, uh -huh. and the album's called Heartland. Now, I don't know if this is the album or not. They're best known for a song called Send Me an Angel, not to be confused with Scorpions. 
Yeah, definitely not. I'd never heard of those guys up until now, but uh, interesting. You'd, know, to you'd probably know the song Send Me an Angel if you heard it. Okay. It's, there's probably a few on this I'm chart. I'm not going to try and sing it. It's very like new wave rock sort of thing. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, number 79, new on the chart this week, is uh, a band that I'm I'm not really familiar with, but, but I know there are some big fans out there. Um, Marillion and their album Fugazi. And they're like a froggy rock. Yeah, they're sort of like, they were sort of like, they they, they called them sort of neo-prog. There was this new batch of bands that sprung up like uh, Palace and and, uh, IQ. But Marillion, I think, were the most successful of them. Um, Mainly, if people know them at all, it's for the song Kaylee, which is a great song. I'm just not overly familiar uh, with them. I know that Mike Lodano is a big fan. We got some, I know we got some big Marillion fans on here. But yeah, I believe Fugazi is the second album. Extensive catalog, I guess, too. Very, Very much so, yeah. Uh, okay, number 78. The band is called Reflex, re dash flex, and the album is called The Politics of Dancing. I can only assume that the song of the same name was on that album. That's that was a, a big song at that time. You don't hear it that much anymore, but I definitely remember no, you heard it everywhere in 1984. Yeah. Heavy yeah. play on, on radio and, and on much music as well. Well, we're going to talk about this one for. Just a minute. I was going to say, we timed this out well, so Chris gets to talk. We did. This worked out well, didn't it? As someone he's met many times. Yeah. Number 69. Or sorry, sorry. That's where it peaked. Number 77 this week is Lee Aaron, iconic Canadian rock singer and her album Metal Queen. Um, That's kind of the persona she adopted when this uh, album and video came out. One that she tried to live down, I guess, for many years years there's the back cover um this one was very much the album that broke her uh she had a debut a couple years earlier um but this one was especially in europe um a huge huge album for her she toured extensively um and it had a couple singles on it i've actually got as well uh there's the picture sleeve single for shake it up uh, which was actually the first single um, the album didn't go any higher than number 69, as I mentioned in Canada, but really established her as kind of the female hard rock vocalist, especially in Canada. Um, never had the success in the US, but we could talk a whole other show about all that and Lee Aaron stuff. Um, so that's Lee Aaron at number 77, iconic Canadian uh, rock album for sure. It really is a topic unto itself. So many of the artists that were on Attic Records in Canada never got a chance to break into the states but sadly that's another topic topic. Um, at number 76 so now we're getting into some um i guess now you'd call it alt rock the smiths uh and it must have been their debut album at number 76 this week and you go right from the smiths to everyone's favorite and i think every family owned a copy of some uh, album from this band it's at number 75 the iconic band ABBA, of course, and their Love Songs album. I don't know if we had this one in our collection at home, but we certainly had ABBA, ABBA albums. My mother and father had the first ABBA's Greatest Hits, which was a gatefold album cover that had yes. one couple sitting on a bench, and on the other side was the other. And to this day, when I see a record with the red and green Atlantic label, it makes me think of that ABBA record. Absolutely. And it's interesting because the, the, this chart lists the uh, catalog numbers, and this yes. is like WTVA, which makes me think this might have been a as seen on TV, uh, advertised. You're very program. right. Yeah. Yes. This, so I'm not really, I'm not hundred percent sure about that. That's just a guess. Uh, number 74. Now, again, watching much music is the only reason I know about this band They're called the Puck Up Me too. Orchestra. Me Self-titled. Too. Uh, they had, I believe it was a cover song, but the, they had a song called Listen to the Radio, yeah. which, uh, I hear every once in a while now, but I think that was their big song. And, uh, they like, uh, Chilliwack and Toronto, uh, they were on solid gold records, which I don't think are went, around anymore. They I don't think they sadly. I don't think they morphed into something else. I think that another they lady did not. Was, uh, picked up the assets or whatever. They completely went under, unfortunately, but had some great artists signed to them. Yeah. Number 73, uh, the band REM and their album Reckoning on IRS Records. I was never a big REM fan. Um, and I don't remember back in 1984 hearing or seeing much from this album um on video or on the airwaves this Uh, might have had that song south central rain 
on it. The, I believe the it did. Uh, much, again, like you too, much music played a ton of our, I knew about REM long before, uh, you know, they broke big. So it was kind of a yeah. surprise when they, I'm like, I thought they were always going to be one of those <laughs> right, city yeah. limits. City limits was yes. much music. It's like alternative yes. show. I thought they yeah. were always going to be one of those bands. Shows what I know. Uh, exactly. So we're talking about great pop songs of the 80s. Number 72. Um, she's best known as like a talk show host and an actress, but she was also a singer, Tracy Ullman. And uh, her album was called You Broke My Heart in 70, 17 places, not 72. This, of course, had the song They Don't Know, which is just a fun little piece of beer candy. That's up six notches this week to 72. Just heard that on the radio today. They don't know. You can't <laughs> not sing along with that. You can't. You can't. I don't care how I don't care how rough and tough you think you are. You're going to. By the way, um, to for some some rock cred, I believe she was produced by Peter Collins, who would go mm. on to work with some, some heavier artists. So. Guitar and Learon. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Number 71. Uh, this was fairly new on the charts. It just been released th third week on the chart, up from seventy seven from the late great Laura Branigan. What a talent! Died far too young, and her album Self Control. I have the uh, single for the title track. Another great, another great song from this year. Yeah, this might be. Like, I rank this up. Probably it's in my top ten pop songs of all time. Um, yeah. This song is, and the video is just like wild for that time of the um of the 80s it's got the most amazing riff that song I, the the guitars on self-control are excellent yeah. I, I i still play this 45 <laughs> Any, who's anybody out there who's who plays guitar on her albums it was right like, please tell us know, um until i until i find out for sure i'm going to say steve lukather because why not <laughs> he did it so. right yeah <laughs> uh, I don't actually I don't think it was, but I really don't know. But it's a great song. Um, number 70. Uh, it is down 10 notches this week. I believe this was the debut album from Eurythmics. Yep. No, it was not. I believe it was her second album. Um, Eurythmics with Sweet Dreams. What a classic. Absolute yeah. classic. Number 69. Oh, I don't have that one. No. Number 69, a uh, Canadian artist again. And her name is Sherry Keen. The album was called People Talk. This was another one uh, where... She had a song on Much Music. The video played constantly called I Want You Back. Catchy. And just very just, catchy. I, 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 it's one of those, you know, you go down the YouTube rabbit hole and you go, oh, that sounds, yeah. oh, that title sounds familiar. And then you hear like memory unlocked. Like I totally remember this song. I can see the video in my head. I can see what her movies. They're going like this. Yeah, exactly. Her and her dancers. Yeah. The interesting thing too is, she was nominated for the Juno for most promising female vocalist due to this album. Well, and that's the running gag in Juno history. That's so many of the most promising artists never go anywhere. It's, nope. just, it's just how it is. Unless you're um, Alanis Morissette, who used to be uh, Alanis, but we go there. <laughs> kid might have a future. Yeah. Um, at number 68, Holding, Band's called The Tenants, uh, Visions of Our Future. Now, I don't know much about this band. I do know they had a song called Sheriff. And I want to say they were kind of a police-ish sounding band. Okay. Based on that one song, Sheriff Came Around Today. Like, it, it's not what I remember from back in the day, but Much Music had one of, in the 90s, they had one of their Rewind Weekends, and that was a song that got played. Not familiar with them at, at all. So I'm glad you gave me a little bit of information. At number yeah. 67, falling down Speaking the chart. Of police. <laughs> da -da -da. The police. Synchronicity. Probably um, one of my all time favorite albums. Definitely one of the biggest albums of the 80s. Countless hits from this one Every Breath You Take, King of Pain, uh, Synchronicity 2. So that was uh, in its 48th week on the chart at this point. Yeah. And I think it went like, it, down from number one, obviously, I think it went like eight or nine times platinum in Canada. I was, um, I was just going to say, it wouldn't surprise me if this was a diamond album in Canada, but maybe it it's got to be, well, it would be by now if it's, yeah, if it was recertified, it would be for sure. What a classic. Yeah. Uh, number 66, it's holding this week. I believe this was not the final album, but the final one before they yeah. split. And, and it's so the go-go's 
and talk show. And if I'm not mistaken, this contained their hit Head Over Heels, it which is another great much. pop song of the 80s. And not one that gets enough attention compared to like Our Lips Are Sealed or... or um, Agreed. Yeah, or We Got the Beat. Agreed. It's a great one. If you watch, if you watch the Go Go's documentary, which is excellent, they talk a bit about this time for the band and how bad it was. They hated yeah. each other. <laughs> yeah. At number sixty-five, and it is down twelve. Is April Wines? Tim's got the cassette. I have the vinyl. Animal Grace. This one was a uh, similar, I guess. Well, I won't say similar to the Go Go's. They were going through what would be soon a breakup um, yeah. eventually. This Could Be the Right One was the first single. Big video on Much Music. That's the song. That's the video. And this is the album that introduced me to April Wine. I saw that song on Much Music. And I remember this is the album I bought with my own money on a trip to Toronto in 1984. That yeah. summer. It's an overlooked uh, April Wine album. Yeah, it was the last album to feature the classic lineup, the classic yeah. five piece lineup. And they, yeah, they they did one last tour and went on hiatus for about eight years. And yeah, this could be the right one. Should have been a big, big hit single. I remember seeing the video back in the day. Now I'm in I'm in the Maritimes, so April Wine are like gods here. I mean, yeah, that's a very good point. Born yeah. in my town of Woodstock, but right. um, I do like I remember hearing just between you and me on the radio all the time, and yeah. I just knew that I just knew. There was a band called April Wine from a very early age, but this might have been, it might have been one of the very first songs I saw in my own watching videos. And it's a very strange video too. It like is. You could tell that money was spent, but 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 wow, not really. What, what does it all mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they look so. The band members themselves look so uncomfortable doing this. Oh, it's awkward. It, a lot of these seventies bands, they're just like, what is? What, why can't we just <laughs> go on the road? But yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, number 64, another great example of just classic 80s pop, Shannon with Let the Music Play. I don't know anything else from her other than that one song, but what more do you need to know? That's a great song. You still hear that song on a lot of 80s uh, radio stations. That's a yeah. that's a kind of a mainstay. And number... someone mentioned this, and I never thought about it before, Chris, but no one would ever call that song disco, but it kind of is. Yeah, I would say was a dirty word by 1984, but that managed to be a huge hit. I think so they referred to Holiday by Madonna, Madonna, for that matter. Well, that's a, you know, exactly. But I, I think they referred to this style by now. Her style is, I think it was freestyle, is what they called it. Okay, that was a nice <laughs> way of without using the D word. Yeah. Right, exactly. Uh, number 63, 28th week on the chart. This. Oh, yes. I am a, mass I am a massive Kenny Rogers fan. This is his. I think third compilation by this point. Um, his 1980 greatest hits is the more iconic. Um, yeah, package, that's the one that we had, we had a lot of Kenny Rogers. Mom was a big uh, Kenny Rogers fan. We had a lot of Kenny Rogers records in in the house and tra eight tracks. I bet too. This one though, no, someone no? I somebody in my family had the greatest hits on eight track, but we we didn't. We just had records. This one goes one better and does 20 songs. So this includes everything up through till Love Will Turn You Around, which was a big hit the prior year from his movie Six Pack. Uh, so Kenny, yeah, Kenny sitting at number, rest well, Kenny. Yeah, we had, uh, so we had the greatest hits with him, him on the cover singing and on the song titles down the side, but we also yes. had one called 10 Years of Gold, which had gold bars and each one had a song. I got that, that one too. Awesome. Yeah. Very iconic. Uh, <laughs> close, but not quite the same. Uh, <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself, but you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. Right. At number 62, uh, the British band Talk Talk with their album It's My Life, another iconic song from the 80s. That's been covered by many and is a agreed iconic song. Number yeah. 61, we just saw them. Yeah. They're Kenny Rogers, and the album is Eyes That See, and you See in the Dark. This was a huge, huge album because it had a massive single on it. A little something called Islands in the Stream. Islands in the Stream, yeah. yeah. So this went four times platinum in Canada and went all the way up to number five. Um, yeah. And again, another, if you're a Kenny Rogers fan, it's in your collection. Yeah, and I mean, in that album and a lot of the songs on it were written and produced by the Bee Gees, who couldn't get arrested as artists, but they... They were smart enough to weave themselves in and, and uh, become, <laughs> you know, and write. Well, they always had, they always wrote songs for the people, but yeah. Uh, 
and now close. This is what I was talking about at number six. <laughs> Except balls to the wall. I love the variety on this chart. It's fantastic. It's awesome. Yeah. The I I remember seeing that album in the stores. I was never a fan because I just couldn't listen to Udo. But yeah, I'm surprised that I, when I looked it up, it went gold in Canada. That album. Yeah, it was. I think it went gold in the states too. I think it was the only one that did. But I I think a lot of people thought when they first heard the song "Balls to the Wall" that it was ACDC. Yes. And I bet you in the file sharing Very area, similar. it's labeled a lot too. Yeah, good point. Exactly. Just like yeah. ACDC had that great song, Son of a Bitch. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Nazareth Hair of the Dog. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, you're, yeah, absolutely yeah. right. Number 59, up three from number 62. Great band, big country. Uh, this is the album Wonderland. Oh, actually, you know what? Sorry. We have to have a discussion about this because I looked this up because I, I have their debut which is great, which contains in a big country. In a big country, yeah. This, this one, I couldn't find an album entitled Wonderland. I found only that it was released as a single. So I'm not sure if something's up with the chart here. Okay, or... so th now that I look at it, and the catalog number looks a little weird. It doesn't look like an, a Vertigo album uh, catalog number. Right. Maybe so when it, I looked maybe it up, maybe it was like a six song, maybe it was like a mini LP or an EP. Yeah, I couldn't find any info on it, but and I'm not familiar with the song, so I thought it intriguing that that one kind of flew in there on the album chart when it probably was not an album. So if anybody has any info, yeah, I'm I'm just going to guess, you know, we're looking right now, but I'm I'm guessing it was like maybe a six seven song mini LP that, you know, kind right. of like you two had that one called Wide Awake in America that Right. It charted as, but then Billboard said, no, that doesn't count. Anyway, it's one of those okay. things. Um, <laughs> at number 58, it's not a band I know much about. I I, I know mid year because no. of Band Aid, but Ultravox and the album is called Lament. It's at 58 this week. So there was a song, another one uh, that was a big video that played a lot on Much Music back in that day, Dancing with Tears in My Eyes. Uh, that and video scared remember. me. That, that, video, was the that, was the nuclear, that was the day after. That was the nuclear Correct. scare. And that Correct. video scared the crap out of me. It was it, it looked, was horrifying. It looked feasible. Yes. Yeah. So and then, Ultrabox, thanks a lot for freaking me out. What was kid. more shocking than that is when I found out that mid Jure was briefly in Thin Lizzy. I did not have I did not have that on my bingo card. No, that's that's a shocker for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and our number 57 up. Oh with a bullet from number 74 mr steve perry's debut solo album street talk what a i'll just say a perfect slice of pure melodic rock perfection this album of course featuring not a lot of uh creativity on the picture sleeve is massive yeah, it's the exact same picture. Yeah, exact same one. Massive, massive song. Oh, Sherry, written about his then girlfriend, Sherry Swafford, um, which was a huge hit in Canada and the US. But the rest of this album's absolutely excellent as well. Let's not forget Foolish Heart. It might be one of his best yeah. vocal performances ever. Correct. Absolutely yeah. correct. Now we're just getting into just plain 80s fun. Uh, number <laughs> 56. M plus M, shortened from Martha and the Muffins, the album's Mystery Walk. This contained Black Stations, White Stations, which is a killer pop song. Uh, and also had the song Cooling the Medium, both of which got a lot of uh, airplay, but especially Black Stations, White Stations. Our friends south of the border have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> it actually made a dent. That song, Did it? Black Stations, White Stations, made a dent in, in Billboard, but not enough. Not enough, no. And, oh boy, I lucked out with this one. We are up to number 55. Oh, yes. Oh, good. I'm glad you pulled out the uh, altered yeah. cover, the alternate cover. Mine is the original pentagram cover that a lot yeah. of people didn't like in the days of 80s devil worshipping. Um, the parents didn't like that. And this one is the nice gatefold. Yeah, and those are the photos, I believe. Those are the photos used. They are. On the on the and it's funny, um, because the CD uses the cut the photos too. I, I bet you it was mid-90s before I knew what the original LP looked like. 
I didn't know that either. I always thought it was the one of the band members, but this is probably, if you talk to crew fans, it's up there as their best. Um, yeah. All of their classic songs are on there. So we're going to keep it heavy. Uh, there's a misprint wow. on this chart. Uh, I before E, folks. Yep. Uh, number 54, <laughs> Judas Priest, Defenders of the Faith. That is the album cover that always reminded me of Voltron. Yep. It's very <laughs> Transformer-esque. Yeah. And this came right on the heels of Screaming for Vengeance and was the perfect follow-up. Love yep. Bites. Yep. Uh, Wheel Yeah. Absolutely great album. Uh, up next, number 53, up from number 64 this week, uh, Nick Kershaw, his album Human Racing. I'm not real familiar with Nick Kershaw, other than I know he had some fairly big success here. Um, went to number 17 and went gold. That had four or five singles, I believe, um, and did did quite well. I, I don't know if he's more of a new wave UK guy or if he's more pop, but he did have some some good choices. So somewhere in between. The weird thing about that is that, uh, I mean, his best known song is Wouldn't It Be Good, which is a great, great 80s classic. Uh, I guess you'd call it new wave rock. Um, peaked at number 46 in the US. I always thought it was a bigger hit. It was, I think, top 10 in Canada. And yeah, it's got a really weird. It's got a really weird video where he's like silver and shiny, but nobody else is around. I I don't know how you describe it, but it was like early special effects in the video. But it's a great song. And Nick Kershaw was also produced. Um, I want to say by Peter Collins again, because Peter Collins was a strictly mm. pop producer before he started working with the likes of Rush and Queen Drake and right. Alice Cooper and Suicidal Tendencies and on and on. So, uh, number 52, it's a live album, uh, holding this week, Sticks Caught in the Act. I uh, their last album, I believe, for six years, and, uh, the big split, Tommy Shaw went solo, Dennis DeYoung went solo, and, yeah. Things were falling apart for Sticks, thanks to yeah. <laughs> that Mr. Roboto, <laughs> but we won't go yeah. there. Uh, number 51, iconic album. From Quiet Riot, of course, the classic Metal Health. As we all know, this was the one that was the first metal album to go to number one in the U.S. And featured their huge single, Come On, Feel the Noise, their cover of the Slade classic. So this one was uh, down from number five's peak in Canada and was a triple platinum album here. So a huge, huge album that they never replicated uh, the success of. And sadly, half of that lineup is no longer with us. Very sad, yes. Yeah. Uh, holding at number 50, one of the biggest, I guess you could, you know, country crossover bands, because they regularly visited the pop charts, but they were huge uh, country band, Alabama, their album Roll On, and I've got that. Yeah, they were everywhere, everywhere. Everywhere. In the area. Yeah. Couldn't go anywhere, and the Grammy Awards, they'd win all the rest of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, number 49, a band I am not familiar with other than I know they're British. It's Style Council, My Ever-Changing Moods. Um, and it had been on the charts for six weeks and it went up only to number 43. Uh, but another UK act. Lots of UK acts at this point in the decade yeah. on the Canadian album charts. And, and and I know two things about this Style Council. I know the singer was Paul Weller, who came from The Jam. And this is a totally different band. Uh, and uh, I, this is one of those cases where it says it's on Polydor here, but in the U.S. they were on Geffen, which I've never understood why. But usually in the U.S. and Canada, you'd think it would be the same. But yeah. uh, there are cases, you know, like Dire Straits, for example, in, in Canada, they were on Polygram, and in the States, they were on Warner Brothers. That is odd. Yeah. And you're up. Okay, number 48. I think they got the title wrong on this. They did. Uh, Daryl Hall and John Oates, they're calling it Greatest Hits, but we all know it was called Rocket Soul Part 1. There was never a Part 2, but nope. this song, this album is just full of hits. And I believe, Chris can show me, I believe this album came with a calendar. It did? You know what? It says in there, let me... I'm going to go for it, Tim. I haven't it, opened this up. Each month was was uh, an album cover, because I guess they'd had that many album covers up to that point. So this is another piece of Canadiana. I don't know if anyone can see it. It's very faint. That is a price sticker from The Bay. Hudson oh, Bay yes. Company, 749. One of the oldest, 
Yeah, one of the oldest companies in Canadian history. From fur trading to hauling oats. <laughs> exactly. And my calendar, somebody used it, obviously, because it's not yeah. inside. <laughs> but go. this is this is a veritable, if you want to get into Hall and Oats, this is the one to pick up. Yeah, because really after that they had Big Bang Boom and all the hits off of that. And that's about it. Yeah, I mean they had the one a, after that died. They had two or three more, but that yeah, they didn't quite have enough for for a volume two. But uh I mean that one is it's not one of those greatest hits albums where you know about half the songs, you know every song on there. Even the two and new there was a big, songs. Right. And hits. the big video, the big video was adult education. Yeah, which was that was a weird video too. Very weird. A lot of people weird. wanted a lot of people wanted to do like Indiana Jones type videos, didn't they? Yes, and we're going to have an example of that in another album coming up here that I'll talk to you about. Yeah. Uh, number 47. Artist I am not familiar with in the least. Laurie Anderson. The album is Mr. Heartbreak. So, Tim, if you can fill me in on well, Laurie she Anderson. Was a, she was a very experimental artist in, in uh, the likes of, say, Peter Gabriel. As a matter of fact, I think they did a duet, um, not Don't Give Up, but they, so they were sort of the, that alternative minded sort of artist. Much Music used to play a video of hers called Oh Superman. And that is oh, okay. just about just about the end of my Laurie Anderson knowledge. All right. Good enough. Uh, number 46, speaking of experimental, um, King Crimson, Three of a Perfect Pair. This, this would be the... Uh, the early 80s uh, lineup that Martin Popoff loves to talk about with Adrian Ballou. Uh, right. I really don't know much, really don't know much about King Crimson. So there you go. But you probably know a little bit about the next guy. Number, well, 40... so. <laughs> <laughs> number yeah. 45, the album Somebody's Watching Me by Rockwell. And everyone knows the title track. The title song, yeah. Michael yeah. Jackson um, singing that iconic the chorus yeah chorus and the video was kind of scary yeah um a little bit it, it was, was that, little, that, little, that little thing crawling around that little pig or whatever it was yeah, yeah. it's pretty weird yeah it's but a halloween rockwell was, a halloween staple now yeah oh it is absolutely rockwell <laughs> I, I think he was the nephew of motown founder barry gordy if I well i thought he I was remember. i thought he was barry gordy jr like i thought he was the son Oh, maybe he was even the son. I knew he was somehow related to. Which is probably how a brand new artist gets Michael Jackson to sing on there. Right? <laughs> that's a, that's uh, a favor called in. Yeah, I would say so, yeah. Uh, and at that time, especially, right? Peak of exactly. success. Uh, number 44. This is a big jump. This is up from 65. Um, I know that they're an acapella act. Fairly well-known acapella act in Canada. I think they're still around the nylons. And the album's called Seamless. Yeah, they're a pretty iconic Canadian yeah. act. Na na hey hey, kiss him goodbye, all that stuff. Yeah, their cover of that I think was actually a hit in the states. Yeah. Exactly. Album. Number forty three is the Romantics in Heat, and I remember the video for Talking in Your Sleep playing yeah. constantly as well. That was another one. That was a big top ten hit for the band from this album, and the cover, if I recall, was the four guys, uh, the four band members, like yeah, that, just I the can, faces. I can, yeah, I can picture it. Um. Yeah, it's interesting. Great. I mean, everybody Wonderful. talks about um, what I like about you being this iconic song did not hit the top 40. When I think no. of the romantics, I think of talking in your sleep. So do I. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, number 42. This was a band. OK, so was it because of Quiet Riot? I don't know. But for whatever reason, they'd been around forever at this point. They were a huge act in the UK, never really broke big in North America. But this mm -hmm. one time. We opened our ears uh, to Slade and their album, Keep Your Hands Off My Power Supply, which I That's believe it, with the big hit Run, Run Away. I mean, that was an iconic, iconic song. I mean, wasn't that big a hit? I think it only peaked at number 20 on Billboard, but everybody knows it. And uh, all of a sudden this, you know, quote unquote, old band were popular once again. Um, and I believe that the album, Keep Your Hands Off My Power Supply, had a different title in the UK and maybe a slightly different track listing, but I'm not hundred percent sure. That video when much music launched at the end of August in 84, the video for run run away was in one of their many one of their... rotations. That yeah. They didn't have a ton of videos. So that's what they 
that's what they played constantly. It was a great video too. Really good video. We've got an album coming up that had the first video ever played on much music when it went on the air. We'll get to that later. Yes, you you are correct. Absolutely. Yeah. Number 41, uh, we've got soundtracks now. So there's a, there's a few on this list. We're kind of come up to um, soundtracks were massive in the 80s. That's one thing I loved about the 80s with the great music in movies. And this one's pretty iconic at number 43, or no, sorry, number 41. It's the soundtrack to the movie Flashdance, which had the massive, massive uh, number one hit. What a feeling by, I believe, the late Irene Cara. She's since yeah. passed away. Yeah. Um, Along with some other songs like Maniac by Michael Cimbello. Yeah. 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 So it was a it was a a, a soundtrack. I I had was a, down a, from a peak probably near Yeah, near the top. I got a chair here. I was gonna pull a pull a cord and a bunch of water come down, but it, 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 it oh, you should have for some reason. But the lighting was bad. That <laughs> was very bad. Uh at number 40, uh, down to 38, been on the charts for 69 weeks at this point. Oh. I believe this was the second album from Culture Club, Kissing to be Clever. My sister got this album for her birthday that year. Huge album. It had yeah, Do You Really Want for Me? And uh, I get mixed up which albums Huge. had their songs, but they had they had like three big hits off their first two or three albums. Yeah, this was a number two album in Canada. And yeah. I hated Do You Really Want to Hurt Me back in the day, but I've since come to embrace it. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, number 39, another band I'm not familiar with um, is China Crisis, Working with Fire and Steel. Uh, it only reached number 36, so it was just shy of its peak. Um, but yeah, UK, um, I know that uh, one of their albums was produced by, I want to say, Walter Becker of Steely Band. So that might kind of steer you in that they were sort of like sophisticated, sophisticated Brit pop. I don't know what you'd call it exactly. And the name, it must be because of much music. Why I know the name, but it doesn't. Oh, I would, I would think it, so. It doesn't automatically link itself to a song in particular. So no, um, at number 38, um, John Kruger, Mellon camp and his album. Uh-huh. And now I believe this was his first album that used his full name. You are correct. Yeah. He was able to get it back. Yeah. Um, and this followed up his massive American Fool album and has some great songs on it, right? You can see the hype sticker there, Crumbling Down, Pink Houses, Authority songs on this. I've got the uh, single. Again, didn't change up the... No, oh, they really went all out, didn't they? They went all out. <laughs> That's the single for Crumbling Down, which was single number one. This is a great album. John Mellencamp's work from like 82 to you know, 89, um, 1990-ish is top-notch. Number 37, a big, big comeback uh, for this British prog band. Yes, and 90125, which, what if a... you look on the side, is simply the catalog number. Isn't that ingenious? <laughs> yeah. And because there were delays, they had to change it two or three times. But I've said this before, it does have a ring to it. Oh, absolutely. And who can forget the the full video, the full length video for Owner of a Lonely Heart, right? Which yeah. was so different and unique. Um, well, and the Trevor way Raven, the song by the way. Would stop and start. And, yeah. yeah. And then restart. Trevor Rabin made this band a pop. Well, not a pop band, sorry. Made he this brought, album. He brought good pop sensibility to it. Ex exactly. Exactly. And it's not a popular opinion, but I like Big Generator too. But I mean, 90125 had. Hold on and changes and it can happen. Can happen. I mean, it's a good it's a good 80s rock album, even if you don't think you like yes. This is a good 80s rock album. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Number 36, soundtrack to Hard to Hold, starring and mostly featuring Rick Springfield. This has Love Somebody, which I think should get the airplay that Jesse's Girl gets because it's just a great song. One thousand percent agree. And I've got the again, I didn't uh, get any. Didn't get creative with it, but there's the 45 for Love Somebody. One of my favorite songs of the 80s. If you want to treat yourself to pure cheese, watch the movie Hard to Hold. Okay. That's also, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, that's also got Bop to You Drop on it, doesn't it? Which is another fun song. Uh, yes, it does. Yeah. Yes, it does. It does. It's a great song. Absolutely. Number 35. Uh, great band. Um, I didn't, I got into them later, thanks to another uh, album that was pretty big here in Canada. This is their album Declaration at number 35. Um, it's The Alarm. Great, great, 
great band. Um, they were, they were I, I really believe, from three. Wales, I think. Yes. And they were sort of a U2-ish, like early U2-ish sort of band. Like yeah, great guitar it. work. Yeah. Um, the song, their song Strength is probably uh, the best known song. Maybe yes. Rain in the Summertime, but... Um, and it is Skid Row's cover of Strength that is the one saving grace on the otherwise horrible Revolutions Per Minute album. <laughs> there That's we go, cool. yeah. Exactly. Uh, number 34, a big album, self-titled, but definitely not the first. Genesis. Uh, this is probably when uh, they first came on my radar. I heard That's All. Me too. Me too. I saw the video. So yeah, yep. this was a big album for them. And that's a great, great, great video. Another great song on this, which I think is one of their best, is Mama. That, that, was, a little, is, that was a little freaky. The video's freaky yeah. and a little <laughs> bit of trivia. Yeah. yeah, I know where you're going. Bill's exactly performance is amazing. This. Yeah. This was in an episode of Magnum P.I., this song oh, that okay. I still remember to this day where Magnum's trying to find a killer who is killing hookers in Hawaii and Mama plays throughout that episode of Magnum P.I. You, you have that's another not, piece of trivia? That's not where, yeah, no, that's not where I, I thought you were going. Yeah, um, Phil Collins, of course, the iconic. Oh, okay. Ah, ah, the iconic laugh in that song was inspired by Grandmaster Flash's The Message. Oh, Wow. Don't push me, cuz I'm close. You know, that's like yes. a jungle. Yes. Right? <laughs> that makes perfect they sense. Played that, so producer Hugh Padgham played that song for them while they were working on this song. And Phil just started going, <laughs> and they liked it. So they used it, it in the sucked. song. And it became like Amazing. the hook of the song. Amazing. Great song. Great, great song. Great song. Uh, okay. Number, yep. number 33. Uh, this is one of my favorite albums from the year. It's one of my favorite albums by this band. Agreed. Queen am, and the works. This was their first album that came out on Capitol in North America. Radio Gaga. Uh, was This is the one you're Radio supposed Gaga. to Sorry, I'm hogging this one. I love this album. That's a, okay. No, go ahead. That's the single. Yeah, Radio Gaga was a huge hit. I Want to Break Free was... people. A lot of people know it now. It wasn't a big hit back in the day, but it's got Hammer of Fall, which is one of my favorite hard rockers of theirs it's got back to humans i love this album this whole album i tear it up this great man on the prowl i'm a big fan big fan of this album this was my introduction to queen this song this single and yeah. that video was where i first discovered queen and a massive bounce back from the disaster that was hot space hot but space, yeah <laughs> That's and my hot that take. single <laughs> also has another great rock song on the B side called "I Go Crazy," uh, which didn't yes. appear on the album until the the '92 reissue started happening. Uh, British synth, uh, I guess, wizard Thomas Dolby, yeah. with "Flat Earth." Uh, I think it's the Flat Earth, and I'm not 100 percent sure. I don't think this is the album that had "She Blinded Me" signed, but no. I do think it's the album that has a song that makes me smile every time I hear it. Hyperactive. Yes, correct. Which was a and, bigger hit in Canada than it was in the States. Yeah, and this album actually did okay here. It went to number 21 and went gold. Yeah. So, Thomas Hyper Dolby has is a very, very strange song and a very strange video, but I get a kick out of it. At number 31 is this absolutely brilliant Billy Joel album called An Innocent Man. Huge. This thing was huge. This is... Uh, Somewhat of a concept album, if you can call it that, because it's Billy basically doing tribute to his doo-wop Motown uh, songs that he used to grow up listening to. It's got Uptown Girl and Tell Her About It, The Longest Time, Innocent Man, Singles Galore, Keeping the Faith. I had this on cassette as well. I still have it somewhere. Played the hell out of this. Uh, um, yeah. I think it was seven times platinum in Canada, something like that. Massive, it massive album for Billy. Singles and, because I think Keeping the Faith was the last single. Yeah, that one was after the other. Five. So almost two years later, it was still. And I mean, who else but Billy Joel could get away with in, in 83, 84, having like these two, like sort of doo op type, type of songs, an a cappella yeah. song, and have these big hits with them? Exactly. And Uptown Girl, the video with his soon to be wife, Christy Brinkley. Classic. Yeah. Remember when yeah. 45 used to come in these little plastic bags? <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Excellent. Um, the Columbia label yeah. is so iconic. Um, 
speaking of Columbia, there's another Columbia artist. Um, this, this is an artist who had been around forever at this point, but he had, uh, I think this is where a lot of people in our generation first heard him, Herbie Hancock. Oh, for and sure. And the album Future Shock, because it had that, that iconic video directed by Godly and Cream called Rocket, which um, I have mentioned this before. I used to think that I, I wanted to learn how to break dance, and uh, I had a KTEL cassette, which was simply called Break Dance. And Rocket was the first song on it. It had like a how-to poster. And I look, oh I don't have any room whatsoever, but I still have fond memories of hearing the song. I can see you now, Tim, doing that. But that remember that video was groundbreaking. Like so much of Dudley yeah. and Cream, right? But just a groundbreaking video. Yeah, and the only time you saw Herbie Hancock was on the TV screen. Other than that, it yeah. was like mannequins and the weird robots bird thing mm. with legs. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very strange. Oh, the 80s. I love it. Yeah. Uh, number 29. This is familiar. Ammonia Back Avenue. Back to our hypnosis episode. Project. It is indeed. Uh, you can see the eight ninety nine. I think this was from Sam the Record Man. That, that's the price this baby went for. Um, this followed up their uh, Eye in the Sky album, which was massive. And big hit from this one was Don't Answer Me, which was a really cool animated video. Um, that I used to love when it came on. Really great song too. Alan Parsons Project is just one of those iconic bands that more people should really get to know. Uh, number uh, 28. I guess this would be the debut album. I, I don't know much about this group. The Icicle Works at uh, number 28. And and they their one song that I know is called Whisper to a Screen. Oh, you've got it. Look at that. I've got a couple wow. surprises for you. Yeah, this is one of them. So just quickly, a little story in this. I absolutely loved that song, Birds Fly, Whisper to a Scream. Yeah. I went out and bought this tape. Wow. I've Strictly never that seen song. that album cover before. Yep. That is it. It's got the old school Vertigo. Yeah. That looks like my, my Lick It Up tape looks like that. Exactly. But I have never listened to any other song on this tape. That's got the QC10 quality has a name. Let's we'll keep that in mind for maybe a future episode. Absolutely, we will. <laughs> Uh, number 27, uh, Wang Chung, Points on the Curve. Wang Chung was due for big things, but not quite yet. This one's got, right, Dance Hall Days on it, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, which was a big hit for them, but they were to go on to even bigger success a couple of years later. Although, oddly enough, the years down the road, I hear Dance Hall Days a lot more than I hear everybody up you on do. tonight. You do. Maybe it's and let's go is a great song for that too. Yeah, um, yeah, it's a great, great, great song. Yeah, number twenty six. This was a band again. I think that they they sold they 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 had earlier success in Canada. Uh, the first album was big, but then there was a gap till nineteen eighty five. But Dire Straits was a band that I think always sold very well in Canada. Um, their live album Alchemy is at number twenty six this week. Yeah, they're a great band. That to your point, always did really well here. Number 25 is UB40's Labor of Love. I was honestly never a big fan of this band, and I, to this day, I could go without hearing Red Red, Red Wine. <laughs> but I do believe they this did is where that song series. first appeared. Uh, and, uh, of course, it, didn't, it, it was a mid-chart single, at least in the States, but for yeah. some reason, they reissued it five years later and it went all the way to number one. Boom. Um, Number 24, one of the great one-hit wonders, at least on this side of the pond. Um, Not the single. Dana, 99 Luftballons, also known as 99 Red Balloons. But uh, to me, the uh, the German version is the right version. I agree 100%. Yeah. You can't listen to So it's got both English and yeah. German. I am a fan of the German version by far. Yeah. Unmistakable uh, hook. And actually, another oh. one of those sort of sad, nu scary nuclear war songs. Once you hear the English version and realize what it's about, it was the era of the scary, uh, you know, Russians back in the totally. 80s. It was totally, yeah. I mean, it was, <laughs> it was all all it was in the news was 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 Gorbachev and Reagan and and, and yep. the Star Wars initiative and the day exactly. after and the, uh, yeah, <laughs> crept into the mu music too. But yeah, we can all. Go on to number 23, <laughs> Billy Idol's second album, 
Rabble Yell. <laughs> How good is this? How good is this record? Um, obviously, the title track, Flesh for Fantasy, Catch My Fall, Eyes Without a Face, which I have the 45 picture sleeve for Eyes Without a Face. I'm seeing Billy in August in concert. Really excited about it. I've seen him a couple times, but this album is his kind of signature piece for sure. Yeah. Uh, number 22, The Pretenders, in the album Learning to Crawl. I think that this was, um, seemed, if I if I got this right, seems to me that a couple of band members died. Yes, this was, the this first was their first after album that. after their passing. Yeah. Yeah. So this one, this was a big album for them, actually, because uh, it had Middle of the Road and Back Middle on the Chain Gang, which, yeah. which were big hits. And a big comeback after losing two members to drug-related deaths, I believe. Yeah. Number 21, Simple Minds, which they had not yet hit the big, big time with this one called Sparkle in the Rain. Uh, but another great example of a, of a UK band that uh, I think is a little bit underrated, has a great catalog and, uh, you know, in the lines of the U2, etc. That's a, a really good album sitting at number 21, Sparkle in the Rain. What was on that one, Chris? What singles were uh, on that? That big, didn't happen. So it was before. No, it Did was that have like waterfront or um... yes, yeah, it might have been that one. It didn't I have the big seeing song. earlier videos by them. Yes, they just hadn't hit that um, next level yet. Yeah, at number twenty, up from twenty four, I do believe this was this artist's debut album, Howard Jones and Humans Live. There you go. I don't know no, if this is uh... cover either before. Yeah, it's a. It's a little bit of a different one, and there's Howard in the back. It's a super cassette, and it's, like many cassettes of the time, had a picture on the back. Remember, yep. folks, check out our video that we did when we talked about WEA super cassettes in Canada. That was a fun one. This yeah. one's uh, this one's got two songs that were pretty big, uh, New Song and What is Love. You, you'll hear those on, on the radio. Yeah. Number 19, I don't have it anymore, but this was the first cassette I actually walked up to a counter and uh, paid money for when I was probably just oh, wow. shy of 11. Platinum Blonde, Standing in the Dark, their first album. Which is iconic for Canadian music fans. Doesn't really matter. Big, big, big they, hit on that one. They never uh, they never broke in the States, which seems strange to me, because to me, they were kind of a cross between, like, Duran Duran and Def yeah. Leppard. I mean, they had, a, they had some guitar, but they had, like, a new wave. I think they started as a police cover band, as a matter of fact. I think they so. Had Mark yeah. Holmes on both, who was who was from the UK, moved to Toronto or whatever, and yeah, for like three or four years, they were household names in Canada. This album and the next one, Alien Shores, they were massive. And teenage girls, if you if you go and look at old video footage of them at concerts and interviews, screaming teenage losing girls, losing their you minds, <laughs> losing their yes. minds, literally, yeah. exactly. Number eighteen was uh, an artist that I loved in the 80s just for the sheer fact of what song is he going to do next yeah <laughs> mr weird al yankovic in 3d now i don't know if this was the album that had eat it yeah, it, it, is. It, it is it is okay so there yeah. you go it was a this big had eat it, this this said, i lost on jeopardy uh yeah there's this there's probably another one that's not coming to me but yeah so much fun so much yeah. fun um, and I took the Platinum Blonde from you, so I'm going to let you do the next one, too. All right. Well, that works well because I've got this on every format, but I'll show you the album cover. Scorpions Love at First Sting. This is the censored album cover in that this part has been really darkened, so you can't yeah. see much detail. <laughs> uh, this was, I mean, Blackout was kind of their breakthrough, but this was really their breakthrough yeah. in North America. Uh, especially with Rocky Like a Hurricane, right? But um, this is this is probably my favorite Scorpions album for sure, um, and a huge hit here in Canada and the U.S. What a so it's actually got three covers is. then because there's two variants of that one. Yes. But then there's I've seen one that where it's just a band photo. Yeah. So what they did initially was this cover was shot that revealed more of this area. Yeah. <laughs> you can see it's. There's nothing to see there. It's black. So they darkened it. Yeah. And then I think it was Walmart that complained about the cover and they replaced it with this, the band shot. Is there a band that had to change more album covers 
in their career than the Scorpions. We, we don't even want to go down that road, but because there's one in particular that's just <laughs> awful. Um, oh, all that's right, awful. number number sixteen, uh, the second solo album from a member of Pink Floyd. I believe this was his his um, his uh, his second solo album. David Gilmore in About Face. Yeah. Great artist, great guitarist, uh, really great album. Absolutely. Number 15, we're getting into some big, 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 big albums now. Yeah. ZZ Top, Eliminator. I own it on every format, well, other than a track. Um, I haven't been able to track that down, but Tim probably has. <laughs> I have it, yeah. It's a little beat. <laughs> or will be. Yeah. yeah, there we go. This was the album that saw them go completely, oh, well, not completely. They definitely went MTV age. They added the synths in, and this is chock full of hits. Give me all your loving. It's the first I've ever heard of them. Sharp dressed man. Yeah, me I've too. I had, I had no idea who they were. No idea who they were. And and watching the documentary on them, I don't think they had any videos. There are no video other than live clips. There are no actual videos for free eliminated, which is kind of weird because most bands have absolutely. Yep. Clips, you know. And this cassette That's I have cool. is this one of these ugly U.S. Columbia House, oh, like the ugliest design ever in the, for cassettes. Like the, you know, the, yeah, I, I'm not a big. Yeah, fan I don't of know that. why they did that. Those are the worst. I have a couple of those too. Yeah, uh, number fourteen. I guess you could say he was sort of um, I, again that sophisticated pop. But uh, Joe Jackson, Body and Soul, number fourteen. Number thirteen was uh, an album that broke well. An album that saw them follow up their breakthrough, Rio. Um, oh, that's the, actually the 12-inch single. Sorry. That's very cool, that's though. Reflex. Yeah. yeah. So um, this is the album, Seven and the Ragged Tiger, from Duran Duran, sitting at number 13. So this is an album that, beyond the singles, is not fantastic. And this is by far the superior version the remix by now rogers of their number one hit the reflex which the video played everywhere and was shot at maple leaf gardens in toronto which That's is right. a yeah. cool fun fact yeah and another big song from that was new moon on monday and i even have tim if you want to put it on your wall the limited edition poster sleeve for the reflex which many many teenage girls in my classroom had posters all over <laughs> of Duran yeah. Duran. Uh, number 12, it was, um, I guess, what is it, what, their fifth album, I think, uh, Holding This Week, just full of hits, produced by Mutt Lang, The Cars, and Heartbeat City. This, this, yeah, might... this album had, you might think, Magic, yep. uh, uh, Hello Again, um, oh, Drive. Drive. I was say, there's one huge one, that's, huge and another one. song, that hit the top 40 that I never hear anymore is why can't I have you, which is yep. sort of a ballad, but yeah, it was a big, big album for them. Although was, they uh, really were never quite the same after this. No, they were, uh, they were probably that album is one of the most, that summer of 84 was magical for me and partly due to that album, and especially yeah. magic. Exactly. I don't have the soundtrack album, but I have the single that was a number one smash for Mr. Phil Collins. The soundtrack Against All Odds was the film, and that's the single Take a Look at Me Now, Against All Odds, Take a Look at Me Now, which was, I believe, his first number one, I think. Oh, yeah. This was the um, beginning of like two or three years of Phil Collins' saturation. Run. Oh, this is when he went from just Everywhere. being politely... Everywhere famous to being all of a sudden he's in Miami Vice and, and the, he's producing and he's, you know, Philip Bailey and then Genesis are back bigger than they ever were. And yeah. Yeah. We got, uh, we got number it. 10, uh, the second we time we've 10. mentioned him on this chart, uh, down a couple of notches, Eurythmics and their album touch. That's a great album, but not nearly as great as one of my favorite albums of all time. Sitting at number nine. Huey Lewis and the News Sports. Um, if you don't own this album, what is wrong with you? Come Practically on. a greatest hit. This under is an all time club. Yeah, like this is this is an album that still I play regularly. Hard rock and roll. If this is it, I want a new drug. And I'll quickly show you that I've got the forty fives for walking on a thin line. If this is it, yeah, and. I want a new drug. So I'm looking for Heart and Soul, which might be my favorite Huey Lewis song. 
Um, Walking on a Thin Line is such a great song that not many people know, and I think it's because it, there's no video for it. Yeah, no um, video. When they made iconic videos for that album, right? Yeah. Uh, number eight, guessing it's the second album for Thompson Twins, Into the Gap. This is a great album. Hold Me Now is one of those classic 80s songs that stands the test of time. Great video for it, too. Yeah. Um, and, a, and a really good band. Is Dr. Doctor really on that? Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great song. Another great too. single from them. And they had such a unique Absolutely. look, too, right? Oh, yeah. They were really interesting looking. Yeah. Yeah. Number, what are we up to now? Number seven. Yeah. From the legendary Lionel Richie. This was a massive album. Can't slow down. All the big hits on here. Penny Lover, All Night Long, Running With The Night. And remember that weird song and video, Hello? <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're stuck, stuck on you. Making That's a on there. sculpture of his face. Yeah, it's a great album. Well, that was okay, a huge so I, album for Lionel. I got I to gotta say, I, I, saw Lionel, I saw Lionel on Strombo, and uh, he was talking about that. He kept telling the director, um, I can't think of who the director was. It was a big, big director. It doesn't look like me. It doesn't look like me. And finally, he said, Lionel, she's blind. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, if anybody hasn't watched the We Are the World documentary on Netflix, you should oh, definitely. Good. Biggest Night in Pop. Great. Should definitely so watch it. So yeah. Good. Number six, Culture Club. And I think this was their first album, Color by Numbers. It's down one notch this week. So this is the one that had, this is album number two, actually. Because the kissing, okay. the kissing, the one earlier on the charts, kissing to be clever was number one. This is the smash oh, okay. hit number one single, Karma Chameleon. Yeah. Karma Chameleon that was on this one. Huge song, huge song, great song, great video. Oh boy! Next up, Cindy Lauper at number five. I actually used to have this, but I don't. I'm gonna have to get another copy. Her debut, She's So Unusual, which was massive. Time after time, girls want to have fun. She bought, um, and that colorful cover of Cindy dancing and it was the, it was starting to be the era of these blockbuster albums that spun off multiple hit singles and you'd, yeah yeah it was a, it just it was a, and and you realize that two three years before that it wasn't necessarily the case you'd have one no not at all per album uh number four one of my favorite bands i know this is not one of fa chris's favorite bands but um uh rush grace under pressure this is actually a u.s version it's canadian so it'd be on anthem this is a mercury version and this album, among other things, contains the song The Enemy Within, which was the very, very first video that Much Music played August 31st, 1984. I certainly didn't know that at the time. We didn't get Much Music until ni early 1986. Although, when I discovered that we had Much Music, they were playing a Rush video. So it was Mystic Rhythm. So. Perfect. Anyway. Number three. Come on. 72, yeah. weeks, 72 weeks on the charts at this point in Canada. Michael Jackson Thriller, uh, arguably, as many will say, the greatest album of all time. This is like sold, what, 50 million copies worldwide? And yeah, chock full of hits. It, so, always, it, it will always be selling, you know, copies. I'm I've just got looking. this on every format. In, yeah, multiple copies. I've got the anniversary edition. This is the original um, if this isn't in your collection, I'd be surprised. If it's not in anybody's collection, I'd be surprised. But what an album. And surprisingly enough, the album, the, the only other album that comes close to the longevity on the chart, on this chart, is the debut Culture Club, Kissing to be Clever. Um, yeah. It's been on the charts for 69 yeah. weeks. At number two, well, well, in the States, this album couldn't quite dethrone the monster that was Thriller. Yeah, Van Halen. There you go. I love it. 1984. The last album with, I mean, yeah, the last album with the original lineup, or the original recording lineup. Uh, Jump, number one song, Panama, uh, Hot for Teacher, I'll Wait, another great song from the 80s, which didn't have a video. There's a single for Jump. Yeah, this was it. Um, and this out, this is a diamond album. I, I, I'm not sure how it sold. In uh, in Canada, maybe Chris knows, but it was. It's a uh, yeah, album. this here. was diamond. Uh, no, I think it was nine times platinum here, but uh, it was my introduction to Van Halen. And yeah, me too. Probably, I've never heard before. Probably my favorite uh, 
uh, Van Halen album still to this date. Um, yeah, just a just an iconic album that if you ever want to do a little fun re research, go and look and see how many albums Thriller kept out of the number one spot. There's oh, quite Pyromania, a um, yeah, there's a bunch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a bunch that, so that leads us to the number, number one album of uh, of this week in 1984. And oddly enough, the man that would replace David Lee Roth makes an appearance on this album. I shocking. And this is this is a this is a great soundtrack, by the way. The soundtrack yes. to the iconic movie Footloose. Uh, this went, I think, nine times platinum. This is one of the biggest soundtracks with the iconic title track. Sammy's song on here, The Girl Gets Around, is on there. Let's hear it for the Next boy. The yeah, Love uh, Team, right? Almost Paradise. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. With Mike Reno and Ann Wilson. Um, and then the, the shot. The second Kenny Loggins song is one of my favorites. Heaven, I'm free. Heaven helps the man. I love that song. Yeah, that's a great Doesn't song. Get and the don't forget too. Gets, but it's great. Don't forget too that Bonnie Tyler's probably second biggest hit. Yeah, holding out for a hero. Yeah, yeah, holding out for a hero's on here. So this is huge soundtrack. Yeah, huge soundtrack that I'm pretty sure spent multiple weeks. I know it did on the Billboard charts, um, yeah. but also on the Canadian RPM chart for sure. So there wow. you go, 1984, great year in music. And this is just, guys, this is just one week, you know. And uh, what I like about it is the variety. And I like doing the Canadian charts for friends around the world because there are artists that you've probably never heard of um, and that we barely know who they are. But I, I give right. much music exactly. all the credit in the world for 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 their support of, of Canadian artists because it, it introduced me to some some great stuff that I otherwise wouldn't be aware of. And, and Chris, you were, you were on, on site, weren't you when they uh, recently. Yep. So that's so absolutely. That's, uh, fault, make sure you follow Chris, my rock and roll heaven. He's got lots of cool content and Chris, thanks for, for doing this. This was great. You had a, a lot more props than me. And I really <laughs> enjoyed, I really enjoyed doing this, uh, doing this run through of this chart. There will be more 84 chart rewinds because it's such a great year. Yeah, I'm looking so Chris, forward to what, what, what have you got going on in my rock and roll heaven? You're just uh posting Ooh. away. Uh yeah, lots going on. Um I, besides obviously posting lots of stuff daily, um, lots of great retro chart action, lots of uh historical releases from bands. I am focusing a lot on new music. So if you guys are interested in finding out any new rock bands, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at my rock and roll heaven. I've got shows coming up. Just saw um, Thornley and the Standstills. I've got Lee Aaron uh, coming up in two weeks with Honeymoon Suite and Street Heart, which I know that's a pretty cool Canadian classic rock. That's, awesome. that's a good Baby idea. Idol yeah. coming up. Um, awesome. So yeah, keep uh, keep it uh, locked into my channels. And again, thanks for for Tim for having me on to go through this chart. I love chart stuff, so. Yeah. I'm always in for a discussion. And sure, guys, <laughs> if you want to know when an album came out, don't trust Wikipedia. If Chris doesn't don't. tell you that's when it came out, that's not when it came out. Because Wikipedia is only as good as, you know, and even the record labels don't know when their when their stuff came out. So there you go. So, Chris, Probably. thank you for doing this. This was a lot of fun. And uh, thanks to everybody for watching this edition of Tim's Vinyl Confessions. We will see you.